As you guys know, it's time for me to get some solar going in this place. Let's do it. Alright, first things first, what are we going to need? We're going to need some solar panels. Here, I'm going to go with the Unisolar PV136 Power Bond. PLV. These are not the cheapest panels in the market. They're not the best panels in the market, but they do have something that I find uh, very appealing, which is the fact that they're roll-up, they're the roll-up kind, they're flexible kind, and so they're super light, and you can put can install them in your roof without any additional hardware, which is really, really important for me because I don't own my own home. I'm going to order eight of these here. Next thing that you are going to need, a ladder. I don't have a way to get up into my roof. This one right here looks like a very good candidate. Look at that, $69. Telescopic, works. Next, these panels come with MC3 solar connectors. These are not the typical connectors for the US. I think these are like overseas connectors. I'm gonna have to make some custom connectors, so I'm gonna order these. Alternatively, you could also just get these that are already made. These are one pair uh, Y type two branches solar panel coming. so you can connect two panels into one and that's essentially what I'm gonna end up doing But I'm gonna do a bunch of them. I'm gonna connect all eight of my panels uh, In parallel next you're gonna need some cable to connect your solar panels Here's a hundred foot of UL solar panel extension cable wires a hundred feet for $37. I think that's the cheapest one that I found. It comes with the MC4 connectors, which are the American version. You're not going to need those. What I did, I just cut those off and I kept them as pigtails to make other extensions for other panels in the future. So I just bought a couple of these, put them in the cart. Then I also ordered some gland nuts. E-boot plastic waterproof adjustable uh, 3.5 to 13 millimeter cable gland joints. And it's got, this is a variety pack so I just ordered those on there. Now that we have that, we just proceed to check out and order them. All right, now we just wait for them to show up. What? What the hell? I guess they're here. Next, the panels. Each panel, actually not each panel. Each order comes with extra of these little pigtails. I realized that when I order multiples and they only came with one of these, but when I order one, it came with one of these two. See, I ordered two separate orders. This is the cool thing about these panels, you can just carry them. All right, so here we are. Two good looking panels. All right, 40.6 volts. What if we short them out? They're not getting direct sunlight right now, but we should be able to put some amps. All right, 1.45 amps, 40.7. What you need up on the roof? You need a drill, the screws, and some little washers, and you need Henry's wet patch and solar panels, of course. All right, so here I'm on my roof. I just picked the corner, which will hide them from the front street. I didn't want to announce it to my neighbors that I was putting solar panels, right? This is not my home, so I don't have permission. And that's why I'm going with these, because these very easily installed and then could easily be removed within an hour. I can remove these and it was like they never been there. Your application might be completely different. You might want to install your panels where they, are, they get the most sun so that you get the most efficiency, right? 
this is the worst corner of my house as you can see that tree there is shading part of my panels here starting around 3 p.m which is is quite early also this uh side of the roof is facing north which is exactly opposite of what you should install your panels here in california here in california you should you should install them uh, facing south which is where the sun is most of the time All right, here now that they're hanging off like that, you're gonna use those little pigtails and make connections to connect them all in parallel. All right, now that I made my cables, now I can go plug them in. But before I do that, let's talk about the two ways that you can wire your panels, right? The first one, you can wire your panels in series. This is really easy because you just get the positive from the first panel into the negative of the second, the positive of the second into the negative of the third, and so on and so on and so on until you get through the entire eight panel. Then at the end, you basically add up all the voltage of all the eight panels, 24 volts times eight, then that equals 192 volts. And these panels will put out a maximum, a theoretical maximum of five amps, which if you multiply 192 times 5 amps equals 960. So these panels that I have up in the roof will theoretically do 960 watts. Of course, that's uh, the best possible scenario, which you never get that, especially me with this installation where the panels are facing the wrong direction and they're being shaded by a tree uh for half of the day the second way you can wire your panels is in parallel parallel this is when you have the eight panels and the positive of the first connects to the positive of the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth basically all the parallels from all the the panels connect together and all the negatives of all the panels will connect together that way you end up with 24 volts which is what these panels are rated for 24 volts times the amount of power that each panel can do in this case it's five amps per panel which is five times eight will equal uh, 40. so you would have to do 24 times 40 will equal 960 watts so they both this is of course again just like the other one is a theoretical 960 watts of power we won't get that no one actually can get that uh, because that rating is achieved usually in a lab with perfect lighting and a perfect temperature and all that sort of stuff right so the question is which is better in my case there are well so there are pros and cons right uh, if you have a large system it's usually better to have large number of uh, series strings because then that will keep the uh, current levels low and so that means you don't have to use massive wires to carry all that load if you parallel then you'd have to basically carry the entire load of 40 amps right in this case I'm using a cable that will handle the 40 amps so I can go either way I can do parallel or I can do series so the reason why I am choosing to do parallel is because they tend to do better when they're shading all right, here's a demonstration of what happens when you have shading on a panel that has their cells in series, right? So this is 24 cells in series. It's outputting right now 5.5 amps. And look at what happens when you shade one entire cell. It completely goes down to 0.6 of an amp. It just completely bottlenecks the entire, it makes this whole panel basically useless now if you have 10 panels like this in series if you block one cell in any of those panels it completely makes the entire system go down but if you have them in parallel 
then only this one panel goes down. If you block partial cells, uh, that's okay because that cell's still producing electricity, right? So you're only as strong as your weakest cell. And if your weakest cell is completely blocked, then you're not producing any electricity. So large arrays of panels that are connected in series are prone to be severely affected by any shading. All right, let's install this scanner here. So once you do that, you just use any kind of conduit. Uh, some people might like using the metal. I just chose the plastic conduit to get it inside. Now you have it inside your house. What do you do? Now you have two cables inside your house that have 24 volts and could do up to 40 amps, probably realistically 30 amps. What do you do with that? Well, you can do a bunch of things. You can use these uh, charge controllers, right? To put a bank of batteries like this here. Or you can use uh, hoverboard batteries, which is a lot easier, right? You use these to set to charge this 42 volts. Or you use some of these other types of batteries that are becoming available, like these guys. Remember, a bunch of you bought these. Well, luckily for you, I've done all type of different uh, power walls. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do your power wall, your battery, and what types of inverters to use, like this one, for example. This is the biggest 36 volt UPS that I could find. So you can use the really, really affordable hoverboard batteries without modifying them. This is straight out. You buy them, you just make this little connector and you connect them there and then you power this. This unit right here will do 1300 watts. Probably not peak because it's a UPS. It's made to run like 20 minutes, but it'll do just shy of a thousand watts, right? And it's very, very affordable. I'll show you how to do that and how to put it on this one of these white boxes. You put it on this white box and you cover it up and it looks super legit and I'll show you that in the next video. All right, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, if you're uh, watching my videos and you live in Europe, I have heard from you guys as to how lucky we are to be in the States and have access to so many batteries, especially lately, right? So someone in the EU has contacted me, Christian Nagy and he says that he's got access to a lot of 18650 batteries brand new for a very very fair price and he has put on a website where you can buy them so i don't know how legit he is but if you're in the eu and you have need for batteries give this guy a try uh, and do let us know if how it turns out because i know that there's a lot of you guys out in Europe. I hope finally this is one source of uh, affordable batteries for you guys in Europe and you guys can start doing DIY power walls like the rest of us here in the States. Okay, bye.